All right, I'm going to go through the five main steps of a land offensive in this game. The first step is command status, which is simply where you select the army group headquarters you're going to activate for this offensive. Uh, in a normal offensive, you get to select one army group headquarters, but this special scenario, you can do a combined offensive with your north and south headquarter. So the first thing you get to do is activate and move up to three hexes that army group headquarters. So this is getting your army group headquarters into position. His command radius is four, so he can activate other units within a radius of four around him. So this first movement of three hexes helps you get your army group headquarters in position. So I'm going to activate this army group headquarters, and I'm going to move them one hex. I could move them up to three, but I cannot move them into an enemy zone of control. So Poland has zone of control over this tile, so I couldn't move my headquarters all the way up to there. Likewise, I'm not going to choose to move this army group headquarters at all. I couldn't move it any farther because this is an enemy zone of control. Step two is the special breakthrough attacks. So these are special attacks that happen before the main combat phase. They can only be done by armor units. So here's an armor unit here. And basically how, how it works is basically an attack followed by breakthrough movement. Um, and you usually want to do this with the general because if you do an attack and suppose you're victorious, you get to move into this spot and then your breakthrough movement is only one tile if you're not accompanied by a general. If you are accompanied by a general, you get to do breakthrough movement of the exploitation value, so five. So I could attack him. If I win, I'll be here, and then I can move five more spaces. So that's called the breakthrough attack. It's basically an attack followed by movement. So I'm going to do a breakthrough attack here. Um, I'm going to use my airplanes to provide ground support during this attack. Each airplane can provide ground support for one attack in the breakthrough phase, one attack in the normal combat phase, and then one attack in the exploitation phase. So I'm going to use this bomber and this fighter bomber as a fighter to provide ground support in this combat here. And so they basically take off and attempt to fly to that spot. Now my bomber has a range of 12, but if I flew him straight over here to provide ground support, once he got in range of the Polish uh, fighter bomber 4, so like once he got here, this Polish fighter bomber could come intercept him. So I need my escort. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, join my escort here, which is a fighter bomber acting like a fighter, and then together, now actually, as soon as they get in range four, one, two, three, four, this uh, guy is going to attempt to shoot down my bomber. As soon as he gets here, this is going to do an interception. So he's going to fly out here, one, two, three, four, and we're going to have an air battle consisting of these three planes. So basically, each fighter gets to attack one other enemy unit. Now the scenario rules say that the Polish fighter will attack the unit that it's most likely to damage. On defense, you, you only get the quality rating. So the bomber has a quality rating of zero, so that's going to be the easiest plane to damage. So the Polish fighter bomber is going to act like a fighter and attack this bomber. My fighter is going to attack the Polish fighter. And this all happens simultaneously, so it doesn't matter what order you do it. So let me just make sure that this is on the right side. Yep. Okay, so the Polish fighter adds his combat strength and his quality rating is 3. And you subtract the quality rating of the target, 0. So the num 3 minus 0 is 3. So 3 is the target number for this attack. We want to roll 3 or less, or Poland wants to roll 3 or less to be successful. Okay, we roll a 6. If the die roll is higher than the target number, the attack has no effect. All right, so Poland was unable to do anything. Now I'm going to add my combat number and my quality rating is 5, minus 1 is 4. So for this attack, the target number is 4. I got exactly a 4, which means the target unit is aborted but suffers no damage. So he's still alive but he's aborted, which means he's basically out of combat for the rest of this round. I think he officially stays in the hex. 
Yeah, it sounds like he just stays in that hex, but he's basically going to do nothing. So I'm going to send him back to base, even though he wouldn't really go back to base until the end of this combat round. All right, so my plane successfully survived interception and continue on their, to their target, which is to provide ground support over Krakow. So I'm going to leave him here, knowing that they're over this tile. Okay, so for ground combat, I add 8 is my tank's combat strength, plus 4 is 12, plus the combat strength of the bomber, which is 6, who's providing ground support. So I have 18 combat strength versus 4. So that's a ratio of 4 to 1. Four to one here. I roll a dice. And additionally, because I have air superiority, there are no defender airplanes above it. And, and my airplanes, but bombers and fighters can both um, give air superiority. But if there was even one defending airplane, air superiority would be contested. So basically this goes up to a six. So six, the defender is eliminated. Poland is, Krakow is dead. I get to do advance after combat. So this is, doesn't even count as a movement. This is just by default. Whenever you're successful in combat, you get to advance into the, the tile. I'm going to go ahead and fly my planes back here to here, here to here. And now I get to perform my breakthrough movement equal to the exploitation value of my general. And I want to get him into position to attack Warsaw. So I'm going to move 5, 1. Now I think once I enter enemy zone of, con uh, zone of control, I can't go farther. Um, but I could go 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so because it's a combined offensive, we also have activated this general, or this headquarters, and the units within its combat radius. So we get to do a breakthrough attack with this 8-5 armor unit and this general. So we're going to do a breakthrough attack here. We can't use any of the planes we've already used during this breakthrough attack, but I can use this fighter. Now, a fighter alone doesn't add combat strength. The only reason I'm doing it is to add the plus one to the die roll for air superiority just by flying over there. So I'm going to declare that this fighter is going to provide ground support. So he attempts to move. And once he moves here, the Polish fighter is going to come out to intercept it. They each shoot each other. So my fighter has combined power of seven. Minus one is six. So that's basically a guaranteed kill. Two is less than six. So I am going to deplete this fighter, which means you flip it over, and if there's nothing on the backside, it's dead. But he also gets to shoot me for combined power of three. Minus three is zero. So he has to roll a one. A one is like a critical hit. He did not. He rolled a three. So the Polish fighter is dead, which means my fighter successfully gets to come on in, provide ground support in this battle. And so the battle commences. We have 11 combat strength versus 4. So if we had 12 to 4, that would be 3 to 1. And you always round in uh, favor of the defender. So 11 to 4. is just two to one. Nice. But we have air superiority and we rolled a five, so we rolled a six. So on two to one, when you roll a six, the defender's eliminated. That was pretty lucky. So I'm gonna go ahead and send this guy back to his air base. This Polish infantry unit's killed. I get to advance after combat. And I could then do my breakthrough movement up to three spaces, which I think will do one, 
two. Once I'm in zone of control of an enemy, I have to stop. Oh, actually, armor. Let me check this. Okay, so armor can always, once it first enters enemy zone of control, can always move one additional hex. So I'm going to go ahead in here. If it were infantry, as soon as you enter enemy zone of control, you have to stop. All right, so we finished step two, which is the breakthrough attacks and moves. Now we're on to the normal land offensive movement phase, where we get to move all eligible ground units activated for this offensive. Okay, so we don't actually have to capture Lvov because to conquer Poland, you only need to control all of the city resource hexes. Resource hexes are the shaded ones, and Lvov isn't a resource hex. So we just get to run right past them. So now in the main land offensive movement phase, we can activate and move all units within the command radius of our headquarters, four. So I'm going to move these guys because they're one, two, three away. One, two, three. I'm going to move these guys Interesting. So these guys can't get all the way up next to Poland without moving first through the zone of control of this guy. Okay, I was worried about attacking across this river because I know that if you attack across a river, you get a minus two modifier to the dice roll. But that's only if all attacking units have to attack across the, the river. So if I can get these infantry here. They're across the river. Any other infantry that join this attack, even though they're crossing a river, don't get the minus two modifier. You only get the minus two modifier if all attacking units are attacking across the river. Also, I believe that city resource hexes can support three stacks instead of only two. I'll double check that, but that lets me move this guy here as well. I'll move this guy here and I'll move this guy. And then finally during an, uh, during step three, the land movement phase, you get to move the headquarters three more hexes. One, two. So we'll go ahead and join this group. And this headquarters being here now will enable all the attacks against Warsaw. All right, who else do we even need to attack? We don't need to take, we only need to capture all of the resource hexes. This one's already ours, we took it here. This one's ours, this one's ours, this one's ours. Honestly, I think we're done once if we can take Poland. Can I get these infantry in range? No, one, two, three. I can't get them up here adjacent. I keep saying Poland, I can't get them adjacent to Warsaw. So theoretically, I don't even think I need to take this unit. All right, well, either way, let's go on to step four, the main combat phase. Now I can attack with any activated units. Um, when I'm checking, like, these armor units were already activated, so they get to attack no matter what. When I'm checking infantry activated units, they still have to be within the command radius of a headquarters. So for this infantry to be able to attack here, he has to be in the command radius of the headquarters. An attack is defined by the target hex. So this, oh my gosh. So this headquarters has a can support two attacks, which can basically support an attack against Warsaw, and all of these units can participate. And it can support an attack here, and all of these units participate. I, I believe what determines an attack is the target hex, and there's nothing restricting a particular unit, such as this tank, from participating in two different attacks. So I think the main attack that we need to win this scenario is this one here, so let's go ahead and do it. All of my fighters and bombers can participate. They, they were used during the breakthrough phase, but they haven't been used yet during the main combat phase. So I'm gonna, and there's no interceptors here, so I'm gonna fly my bomber. This fighter bomber is gonna be used as a bomber and my fighter all to this spot. One, two, three, four, yep. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. All right, so I'm just going to treat them, all of these airplanes, as over here, providing ground support. 
So we add up 12, 20, 24, 32, 35, 41, 45 is my combat strength here. The defending combat strength is 12, 4, 4, and 4. What did I say, 45 divided by 12? That's 3 to 1. Plus I have air superiority. Three to one. This counts as a four because I have air superiority. D two means all the defender has to retreat two steps, which should be good enough to treat this as conquered. Let's just say they move back up here. I'll roll in here with my armor. If I wanted to, I could also go ahead and attack this. But I believe we now meet the requirements for conquering Poland, which is that we control all city resource hexes here, 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 and there. That's it. GG. All right, just for completion, after the main combat phase, we have the exploitation. The only units eligible for an exploitation attack and movement are armor units accompanied by a general. So in this case, they must have a general. Whereas breakthrough is basically an attack and then a movement, exploitation is basically a movement then an attack. So I can move it up to the exploitation value of the general. One two, three, four, five if I wanted to, and then I can perform an attack if I wanted to take out these guys as well. And I could reuse my air support, or at least any air support within range, um, during the exploitation as well. And then the final step is just to mark these guys as activated. If you can't remember them, um, you definitely want to mark the, you know, officially you're supposed to turn the headquarters over to show that it's been activated. So we can mark all our ground units as activated. I'll just put one there. and You can kind of just remember that all these guys were activated. And all of our aircraft should be marked previously committed. And if this were part of a larger campaign, once we've completed our offensive, the opponent can then make a land offensive by activating one headquarters and the units around it and following all the same steps. And then it could come back to me again if I had another headquarters uh, or, or I had an offensive to use and I had another headquarters somewhere else, I could then activate that one and follow the same procedure there.